Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the after show for issue two of The Powers That Be, Decisions, Decisions, uh, where our heroes got, or our heroes to be, maybe, with one exception, the hero that was, uh, getting introduced to plot, whether, he, whether they wanted to or not. Um, we're going to go around and do stars and wishes and then talk a little bit about what happened and where we think we're going from here. Uh, we will start this time with ECAT. Uh, stars and wishes. Uh, right now, my only wish is really to get a better connection for some reason. <laughs> I was having trouble today. Um, but um, I think the stars go to Magda and her absolutely insane, crazy scientist brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Ray, we'll go to you next. Stars and wishes. Stars too, yes, Magda. Oh my God, ja, mm, bouncy, bouncy, boingy, boingy. <laughs> Coffee cups in her wake. Um, stars to you, Trevor. For I mean, just all I, having seen um, the show. Just you are Wentworth. Fuck you. God damn it. Um. And then nice, nice prep, Patrick. Holy crap. Uh, that was all just really well thought out, well executed. Um, wishes. I wanted to, and I think this is just, it's, it's the second, it's our second um, time together. So it's like, when I had some things I kind of wanted, was like waiting for the opportunity and wanted to wait. And then just like, you know, the energy was kept on just continuing. And I didn't really have the opportunity to say some things that I wanted to, but they can be interjected later. <clears throat> so that I'm not too worried about. Um, and kind of on a thing because, um, this goes off of the fact the uh, that directly from that gaming podcast or whatever Trevor that you told me about, and I listened to the like the first episode. Um, Patrick, I felt that there was um, you, know, you did talk a lot this this time around, and understood it would be nice to challenge us to interact directly, challenge us to interact with part of that environment or all of that environment as you're going through and give us a chance because I didn't get a chance to nor did I take the chance to say it's like you know I hang up my denim jacket and grab my leather one and uh wanted to ask if there were people on the plane before we took off because I did want to get the whole make fists with your toes uh, somehow in there, because I'm feeling rather, I, I'm connecting with Bruce Willis. I don't know if this is a good thing right now. I look like Jeremy Renner and I connect with Bruce Willis. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. We're, we're going to ride this for a little while. Yep. Um, yeah, kind of. And he's like, I wanted to ask for a cappuccino. If you've seen, um, Hudson Hawk. Oh yes. yeah. Okay. So yes. I don't know. That's just, that's, that's the, that's the attitude that I'm getting. Um, <clears throat> so if, yeah, if I drop a Bruce Willis line, that's why. Um, but, and also like there's five of us. So um, it's not like gods of the fallen where there was just three of us to interact. There's two more people there's a lot going on. So I realize that the, the whole dynamic structure and flow fundamentally uh, is different. But um, I just thought that for this time, it may have been a little disproportionate in active GM description versus character reaction. I think I've, I'm, I'm going to interject real quick. Uh, something you said about, you know, trying to, you know, feeling like you didn't quite have the have the right points to, to interject. Um, I mean, that's that's a pacing thing. And I think every gaming group um, 
has to find their pacing. And, you know, this is the first time that the, the six of us have all been in a group together. Um, so, you know, we'll, we will find the pacing, but, you know, I'd never be afraid to go back to, to say, you know, hey, can we go back, a, you know, can we go back a little bit? And, you know, like, you know, uh, like I did in the plane saying, you know, while we were still over the seaboard, you know, I looked out and said, seen it. Um, you know, it's a little throwaway thing, but, you know, yeah, if, if there's if there's a good thing that you wanted to interject into something that's already passed by, just hit rewind. Okay, I will. I will keep that in mind. Thank you. Which I think you did well with the whole going back to, I had this conversation with, with the stewardess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so, Marva, since it, we're, we'll head over to you next. Stars and wishes. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was very thankful that, like, this scene kind of felt like, I'm not going to say that it was tailored to me, but it was very easy for me to grab onto things and participate, um, which is often, in other games, is very difficult for me. Um, I, I am very much a peanut gallery kind of uh, uh, player. And so th this one had a lot of little things that I could uh, like grab onto and participate. And um, like, I hope I wasn't stealing the, the spotlight too much. No, um, no, you did exactly what you needed to do. Yeah. And it was beautiful. Yep. You played to it. You had fun like that's seeing, cause you know, that. And this is what Trevor taught me through Gods of the Fallen. It's like, there will be certain episodes that are, okay, we got to hear from Tink. And of course, Crash is going to be Crash. So now this one is going to try to help pull in these characters and have a little bit of plot or character arc push to get then let these characters, and that's what a good GM does. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you did as much as you did was like, for me, I'm, I was doing what Trevor is like, go ahead, just like, now what? You know, I wanna see what you're gonna do with it. And I wanna see you play it up because that's what makes it cool and fun. Yeah, so, so like for me, the, the star was just the group in general, just allowing me and like fostering my ability to just, Steal the scene a little bit and just go full hog and enjoy the shit out of it. So that that for me was definite. And, and this was um, one of my more fun um, gaming experiences, um, and so I, I, I was thankful for that. Um, and as far as wishes, uh, well, like I guess I'm also thankful that you're uh like it, it i don't know why i got the idea it's like oh i'm not special it's just all logic it, it's engineering and so i started to run with that and you were running right there with me and so that i think has been pretty fantastic and so um i guess as far as wishing it's i uh, I wish to be able to push this as long as possible. Like that whole like imposter syndrome. Like I, I have no idea what the hell they are measuring or what they think they're seeing, but it's clearly there, there's nothing there. It's just logic. <laughs> and we can use that to put together oh, your yeah. character arc. Oh, absolutely. Because that is very character archy type of stuff. Yeah. Like complete and utter denial. Yep. Yes. Uh, okay. We'll go over to Julie. Well, just, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That was just an absolute delight to watch. I mean, everybody with the character building, um, I think, yeah, the, which was really heavy this episode which was fantastic because trying to figure out who we are 
playing our characters and who everybody else is to, to figure out the kind of the dynamic between how is my character going to going to react and interact with everybody else I think is really important and fantastic and Ray oh my god you totally killed me with the whole with the, with the Bruce just totally broke me that was awesome <laughs> I loved it um yeah and for said for for wishes yeah I think yeah because I totally got the yeah yeah try try trying to to manage five players is a lot, especially because we have a, a limited time window and stuff. It isn't like you know, our you know like the old college gaming group where you know we would you know game for a four hour gaming session was a short session. Yep. Yeah. You know, five six hours. Or more, depending, you know, depending. I mean, I would regularly fall asleep and wake up and we're still going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so, so it's kind of sort of a, well, the star for being able to manage it and, and a wish for um, making, making sure that nobody, you know, said that nobody gets forgotten. Yeah. So, um so, I'm sorry. Do you have something else? No, I was like, yeah, no, that's it. Um, so for me, um, my star. I mean, obviously, you know, yes, Magda, along with everyone else, uh, the way you took and ran, uh, ran with the the concept of Tink, uh, and the development that we saw from her tonight was was fantastic. Um, but I think everyone had uh, uh, some moments like that. Um, you had more, and I'll get back to that in a second, but. Uh, you know, Julie, the way that, that Paul was, you know, very, very concerned about her family, um, you know, was nice to see because I, I don't think any of us really took this as a, you know, oh, I'll just up and, you know, go, you know, go down the seaboard for a few days and completely change my life and nothing will have changed. La, 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 la. Um, Crash may have been the closest to that, but that's because he, you know, he's got his fish and that's about it. Um, but uh, you know, so I, I think I think everyone's reaction to the the situation as it was presented um, was fantastic. Um, star to Patrick um, for the for the conspiracy thing because I was I I was actually kind of wondering, you know, what other than the offer of a free pass would actually get Crash to go along with this crazy scheme. Um, and that's, you know, I, I was kind of hoping that Emerson would have something uh, and you played, you, you played to that perfectly. So thank you for that. Um, as far as a wish, uh, and I think this will kind of, you know, again, I'm gonna to echo back um, to Magda, something that you said about, you know, not wanting to feel like you stole the spotlight and you didn't by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it was awesome. And we will have those rotating spotlights, but I, I felt like there was a lot of, and maybe this was because this was, it was a very exposition heavy episode. And again, we'll have that. Um, but we had a lot of interaction between one PC and one or more NPCs at a time. And which PC that was changed over the course, you know, over the course of the episode, obviously. Um, and I think, you know, again, part of this is just, you know, as we grow as a group, this will become more natural, but I wanna see more character interaction between the five of us. Um, because that's where we're really going to get, I think, some good care, not only individual character development, but the character of the party development. Um, you know, and again, and, and that goes back to, you know, what I said last time uh, about, you know, waiting to see how all of our backstories intermesh. Um, I want to see all of our current characters intermesh as well. I think that'll, I, I think that will give it a nice, a, a nice dynamic. Um, so that's my wish. Patrick, last but not least. All right. So for stars, I am uh, very happy that everybody took an opportunity to exhibit what their character was like. And because this is one of the big things that was part of my plan for tonight. The first session was to see how the group fights because mechanically that is one of the tougher things to do in games. And a lot of games, that is the game. <coughs> Just go from fight to fight, and, which is you know a good, a good game if you enjoy doing that. Um, this one, there will be fighting, of course. 
because, you know, that's what heroes do, uh, but uh, also a lot of other storytelling stuff. So this one, um, I'm working a bit on doing a uh, big world building jump is to try to introduce you to the situation that you're going to find yourself in. And so um, no combat was planned for this one. I had, like, uh, interestingly, the, the character I had the most writing for was Ray. Um, because of his, uh, in the beginning part where uh, Night Knight has, has the discussion with him and how he's given the, oh, well, you're already a hero. So if you want, feel free to walk away. And uh, that was one of the decisions in the decisions thing is does, uh, um, does Gen X want to be part of the group? Why is he hanging out with them? And that's something he has to figure out for himself. Like, you know, why, why did you like, okay, yeah, get, yeah, sure. I will head off to Washington. I know exactly what's there. And you're the only one who does know any of this stuff. So, and I'm hoping at some point um, as uh, part of a wish that uh, we'll be able to lean more on things your characters know that you don't and trying to figure out the best way to exhibit that. Um, because for instance, like you have a good idea how the agency operates because you've worked with them for a long time. You know how things used to be. You've seen how some things have developed. So, uh, and in other things, for instance, like Tink has a lot of understanding of engineering and mechanics and ultra tech and all sorts of stuff. Everybody has specific things that they know that you as a player may not be aware of. And so I'm trying to figure out the best way to get that stuff to come up and exhibit. Um, like for instance, like Trevor's very good with this uh, where um, not only can I like, you know, dangle things in front of this character and get him to follow, he can do the same thing with me as a GM. So let's say, okay, I'm going to go off and talk to the, to the police chief. Okay, excellent. Because I had no idea where in the game I was going to start working this in. And so perfect timing for this. Because um, I'm kind of envisioning, I'm kind of envisioning Crash as kind of like the, uh, like if you look at Justice League, he's kind of your Batman. He's, you know, the, the broody kind of guy who, you know, doesn't, look at everything the same way as everyone else and is you know taking an alternate approach and so i i rather like that and so each person you know kind of uh, ultimately is supposed to fill a niche inside of the uh inside of the hero team and so i'm trying to figure out what that's going to be for everybody so this whereas amusingly i i actually think i actually see crash as far more like the cartman of the group <laughs> Screw you guys, I'm going home. Screw <laughs> you guys, I'm still in your wallet. So, uh, so, and so with wishes um, that uh, people keep working on the, uh, you know, the individual things about your character, keep running with stuff, uh, that that's exactly, you know, how things are supposed to be. Remember that, you know, your comic characters, you are supposed to be over the top and, you know, a little crazy. So like, Black Ice is never going to be warm and she will always wish that she is. Um, and, you know, Pa is going to be, always be concerned with, you know, um, making sure that things are okay with her family, but also the fact that she's overall kind of cool with who she is because she grew up in an environment where it's okay to be who she is. She has a tail, yeah? So what? There's other people she knows who have tails, bigger tails than she's got. You know, and like, uh, you know, like um, Ray dealing with things aren't the way that they used to be with him and with the entire environment. And so that's the, uh, you know, the things I want to see people uh, continue working on. And uh, with Magda, we have uh, uh, a hook to work on for a character arc. So I will um, poke through that stuff and uh, see if I can give you some good ideas as to which direction you would like that to go in. So, but overall, I'm very, very happy with how things are going. So, um, as I said, like the first week was combat, second week, uh, largely ex, uh, exposition and world building. And so it was a lot of me, unfortunately. Um, but fortunately, next session, it becomes a lot of you again, because you have to figure out how to get through the test, which will be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> so I, I uh, Money Cook, um, who, for those of you that don't know, is actually the person who wrote the Cypher system uh, and is a longtime veteran of, of writing for many role playing games. Um, just put out an article on his Substack today uh, about world building, uh, and it, it's called uh, "Designing Instead of Defining," or no, "Describing Instead of Defining." And it's the idea of you know you you 
you world build not by setting out how things are and always shall be and or have always been, but just describe how they are now and let the let the the structure of the world kind of grow organically from that. Um, so and I think I, I think that'll be, you know, because you you've set up a really good premise. Um, and now I think, you know, and obviously, you know, the five of us come along and your best laid plans are gone within a minute and a half because yes. we're players. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think going forward, um, I really want to see how the six of us end up describing this world. Yes. Uh, I kind of view uh, my point with the world building is I'm kind of dumping the puzzle pieces onto the table and you all have to figure out how things are going to fit together. And the thing is, is that they don't already fit together. There are some parts of the, you know, the storyline that are kind of written out. There's other parts that are just way out there. Like what, like well, when I wrote up the stuff for this week, I had the actual decision tree of generally the party is going to follow one of three routes. And so I had kind of an outline for it. this is what happens if they are like, okay, screw you guys and just scatter. So what am I going to do then? Yeah. Because you had that opportunity, you could have. What happens if you, okay, you know what, fine, take me into jail. Screw you guys. So <laughs> then the character of the story has to change around as you get through that. You know, what are y'all going to do? Like eventually have a jailbreak? You know, you know, whether or not you come out as heroes or villains or, you know, the top guys or the bottom guys, you have no idea yet. Yeah. To see how the story plays out because I'm one of six people telling the story. And I very much like it, you know, like, uh, get used to taking control of things. If there's, you have a cool idea, let's run with it because, you know, what's the worst that can happen? All right. Uh, anyone else have any thoughts or ideas or questions they want to share? Again, I think it's, it may be a little bit too early in the story to really get into like serious theory crafting, but um, you know, what, what, what do you guys want to see happen next? I'd like to not die. <laughs> yeah, not die. Not dying is good. Yeah, just I saying. Love it <laughs> this is not one of those systems where you have to roll on the random table at the end of character generation to see if your character actually survives. Yeah, like, oh, God, know, old traveler. Even up you pied landfill. <laughs> oh, man, I haven't played whole in ages. <laughs> Um, so I do want to say, and I, I, I said this a lot during the Gods of the Fall campaign, um, just because it's something that, uh, is, is not necessarily common in games. And I want to make sure that it stays on everyone's radar. Um, these characters are going to grow and change as the story goes. And especially your descriptor is relatively like mechanically is relatively easy to change. It's literally just, you know, you shuffle a couple of point, pool points and a couple of skill trainings around, and that's pretty much it. Um, so, you know, as, and I'm, I'm, you know, obviously, you know, Patrick is the GM, it's, you know, it's your final say, um, but just going on the mechanics of the system, don't be afraid to say, hey, I think my character is going down the path to this point. Um, you know, what can we do with that? And Crash is a perfect example. At some point, he's going to stop being dishonorable because he is going to get, you know, well, probably no less of an asshole, but, you know, at least a little bit, you know, less of a straight up criminal. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind as something, you know, you are not locked into this, in, into this forever. Um, and one other thing to bring up with that is... I am very much flexible on, especially early on in the game, but as time goes on, if something isn't working correctly with how your character is built or whatnot, we can tweak them. You know, we know how many points have been issued out and all of that. So if, for instance, like at some point, you know, like Magda's like, oh, I think I have too many in shifts and not enough ability to do other things, we can adjust stuff, you know, because um, if this is a, a comic book world and retconning is part of comic books. So we could very well just like substitute a new character in and act like nothing has changed whatsoever. And that fits with exactly how it yeah. works. 
All right. Uh, anyone else have anything else before we take off? Because I know it's getting a little late for people. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys uh, again for, for being part of this. Um, those of you out there in viewer land, we will see you in two weeks. Uh, and other than that, have a great one. And thank you again for tuning in to the powers that be here on Vitruvian Meeple.